Yet she on earth has union with God the three in one, and with the saints communion with those whose rest is one. All oh, happy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, the Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, And of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. Glory. 
glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word is, the Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Every day will I bless you and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, <clears throat> Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. 
The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. He said to them, you too go to my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go out into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the first and ending with the last, or beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them got the same daily wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last laborers worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to them in reply, my friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Imagine there were four houses on your street and you own the large corner property and your house was valued at $400,000. The house next to you was a little smaller, but it was valued at $300,000. The house after that was valued at $200,000 and the fourth house was valued at $100,000. Now a real estate agent calls you and he says, I'd like to buy your house. I, I want to give you $500,000 for it. Well, happily, you, you say, <laughs> fine, I'll sell it. So you sell your house. The next couple of days, you're talking to your neighbors, and you find out that each of those houses were sold. And then the Thunderbolt, they all received $500,000 for their house. So angrily, you get on the phone and you call the real estate agent and you ream him out. And he says to you, did I cheat you? Or are you envious because I'm jealous? Those are the words our Lord spoke. To appreciate the original meaning of the parable, you have to keep in mind that the latecomers that went out into the vineyard five o'clock in the afternoon were not lazy idlers standing around the marketplace all day long. They were the lowest workers in Palestine. They were day workers, which meant they had no permanent job. If they weren't hired that day, their families did not eat the next day. They were the lowest of workers, and yet they depended upon daily work to sustain their families. So waiting until five o'clock was a burden. Imagine waiting all day long and fretting and thinking, how am I gonna feed my family tomorrow if I don't get work today? So in Jesus' time, if a man did not work, his family did not eat that day. And if he found work early in the morning, Imagine how his heart all day rejoiced. Not only did he have work, but he could feed his family the next day. It made perfect sense. But ask yourself, why did Jesus tell this parable? 
Now, he never told a parable without a very good reason. Who were the latecomers and who were the early laborers? Well, it was obvious the latecomers were the sinners, were those who were despised by Jewish society. They could have been Gentiles or pagans, and yet they listened to his preaching, and they did something that so infuriated the Pharisees that they almost couldn't stand it. They repented. They accepted the message of Jesus. And who were the early laborers? Well, they were the Pharisees themselves. But the Pharisees were enraged, not about a daily wage, but that God would give these sinners the same reward as they themselves deserved because they were faithful all their lives to the law. They went to the temple. They prayed three times a day. They sacrificed themselves. They deserved more. But did I cheat you? Or are you envious because I am generous? So ask yourself, why did the early laborers resent the latecomers? Why do so many people either get happy or sad depending on whether they think they're better off or worse off because of what someone else has? Why do we often resent the good fortune of others and become jealous of what they have? Why is that? What makes us jealous of other people? Well, one reason is because we think they are better off than we are. They have more money than we have. They have a bigger house than we have. They have more talents than we have. They think that they are better looking than we are. So someone else's talent or gift seems to be a deprivation to us. And ask yourself if that's true. But unfortunately, when we do this, we make the biggest mistake of judging others by human worldly standards rather than God's standards. And God answers that for us in our first reading today. In God's plan, our talents may be even more valuable than someone else that the world considers to be powerful or more successful. And why? Because sometimes we don't appreciate the very talents and gifts that God has given us. We think somehow we're cheated because someone else we perceive has more. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. And as far as the heavens are from the earth, so far are my thoughts and ways above your ways. See, God has a plan, and we don't necessarily know what that plan is, and sometimes that plan seems a little off-skewed because we're thinking with a worldly mind rather than with God's mind. And I know that's true. Several years ago, there, there was a, a laboratory jet that was coming in for a landing at Edwards Air Force Base in California. And the pilot making all the provisions for landing, of course, put down the, uh, the landing gear. And a red light all of a sudden began to, to, to beep, and a horn went off, and he knew something was wrong. The front landing gear was not coming down. Now here's a multi-million dollar jet loaded down with multi-million dollar equipment, and he's gonna have to come in for a crash landing. So the co-pilot does what the co-pilot does. He makes a quick check of all the systems, and he discovers that there's a panel that's out. And that's what's not putting down the front wheels. And he knows he's got to fix it. So he found something that would fix it. He found a paper clip. And he twisted the paper clip and he stuck it in the panel. And all of a sudden, the red light went off and the wheel came down. So here's a lowly paper clip that at that moment was more important than the rest of the multi-million dollars of equipment that were in that jet. Sometimes God has a plan for us that we can't understand. And we think that our gift and talent 
is not going to be used for his honor and glory. And if we're thinking in a worldly way, then we're thinking it's got to be important stuff that we're involved in. And sometimes God has us where he needs us because he needs to use the gifts and talents that he has given us to do his divine will in our world. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. And we can't be envious or jealous at what we perceive to be someone else's blessings when really what we have to do is stop and count our own. You know, we all don't have the same blessings. But each of us has been given talents to be used for the common good, to be used for God's glory. And if we sit down sometimes and physically make a list of the gifts that you think God has given you, and when that sense of jealousy or envy pops up its ugly head, pull out that list and just read the things that you believe are blessings that God has given you in your life. It's a great equalizer. I told this story once in a homily here, because I've been here for 25 years, so I try never to repeat myself. But I can't read this gospel without going back to my great aunt Josephine and my great aunt Anna. Now, they were great aunts, which meant that they were, they were my parents' aunts. And, uh, aunts. Josephine was, she was a special woman. She was a daily communicant. She was, uh, you know, by her chair was the rosary, her prayer book. I mean, well-worn, you know. Uh, every morning she got up, she went to Mass. I mean, she never married all her life. She took care of her mother after her stroke, and then her mother died, and then her aunt had a stroke, and then she took care of her, and then she helped raise us. She lived right across the street from us. Anna was the direct opposite. Anna loved the nightlife. She loved the fancy clothes. She loved the big, flashy cars. She never had children. She always had plenty of money, and she knew how to spend it. And I think, in a way, Anjo despised her. Now, I met, that may be a rash judgment, but I know that they didn't have a lot of like for one another. My Aunt Anna had a series of heart attacks. And I came home from the seminary and, uh, to go see her in the hospital. And she was in ICU, and she was on a ventilator, but she was conscious. You know, and I tried to talk to her. I, you know, I, are, you disc uh, are you in any pain? And she said no. And I said, is there anything that you need? And she shook her head yes. Well, she couldn't talk, so she went like this. So I went and I asked the nurse if there was a piece of paper and a pen that I could borrow. And, and she put it, and she wrote, B, A, P, T, T, I. I said, baptism? And she said, yes. She was never baptized. I said, Anna Ann, do you want to be baptized? Yes. So, you know your catechism, in danger of death, any, anybody can baptize. So I went out and I asked the nurse if I could have a little glass of water. And she said, well, she's on a ventilator, so I, I, you can't give her. I said, no, it's not for that, it's, I want to baptize her. So she gave me the water and I baptized her. And the next day, she died. I couldn't wait to tell Aunt Jo the story. I said, Aunt Jo, the, the greatest grace was given last night, and Anna asked for baptism. And my angel looked at me, she says, you mean to tell me that woman's going to be in heaven with me? <laughs> See, in some sense, she doesn't deserve it. <laughs> you know, she, she never went to church, she, you know. But God is generous with his mercy and his compassion. Now, I look at those two women and I think of the deprivation of my Aunt Anna's life. All her life, she lived without a clear knowledge of God's love for her, God's providence in her life, God's special love for her. She, was cheat she cheated herself out of that. And Joe knew that all of her life. She had the consolation of her faith. She had the love of her family. She had the admiration of her neighborhood. And yet, she couldn't rejoice 
that Anna, at the last moment, will receive the same mercy. We cannot, my brothers and sisters, limit God's mercy. In fact, the most important thing is, in life is not what other people think of us or what we do in life to engrandize ourselves. The more important thing is how God thinks of us and the love that motivates what we do in life when we accomplish something for God's will. So let me close by recalling this prayer from Cardinal Newman. He wrote in his journal, God has committed some work to me which he has not committed to another. I have a mission. I may never know it in this life, but I shall be told what it was in the next. Therefore, I will trust him. He does nothing in vain. He may prolong my life. He may shorten my life. He knows what he is doing. Oh God, I simply will to put myself without reserve into your hands. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He, he suffered, suffered death, death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I, I believe, believe in the Holy Lord. Spirit, the Lord, Lord the, the giver, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son, he's adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As people of faith, we lift our voices in prayer to the Lord for the needs of our church and our world. That our bishops, priests, and deacons may have a deep commitment to the heart of Christ and fearlessly proclaim the truth of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders who work for justice may continue to speak out against abuses in our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose God is money, that the gospel of Christ may free them to see that love of God and neighbor come first. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us may actively witness our faith by our courageous example and bold words. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick and suffering be granted healing in body, mind, and spirit, especially John Cap, Marie Dishman, Kay Durundo, Joel Oltheaton, and Bill Jenkins, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our deceased loved ones will be raised to eternal glory and live with the angels and saints, especially Carl DePaulis, for whom Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we humbly place these prayers before you and ask that they be heard and answered in the name of Jesus, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.
Ja, ich habe verlegt. Brethren, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The praise and glory for our good and the good of all his Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing this sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Bernard, St. John Vianney, St. Padre Pio, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The power of the glory are now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ, Jeremy. Body of Christ, Brian. Body of Christ, Tom. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ, Frank. Body of Christ. Body of Christ, Suzanne. Body of Christ, Marie. Heather, body of Christ George, body of Christ Winnie, body of Christ Linda, body of Christ, body of Christ Alan.
Morning Mass will be celebrated this week, Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Our 75th anniversary Mass and Reception will be celebrated on Sunday, October 15th. Mass will be celebrated by Bishop Senior at 2, and the reception will follow immediately in the parish hall. Parishioners who would like to attend um, can sign up this weekend at the bulletin board. Our Knights of Columbus are hosting their annual book sale this coming week, September 28th and 29th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and next Saturday, September 30th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the parish hall. There will also be a table of statuary objects that can be purchased for a donation. Our parishioner, Phyllis Krieger, is offering a free financial class this Tuesday evening, September 26th from 6.30 to 8.30 in the evening in the parish hall. Um, the class is for couples or individuals on how to plan for financial emergencies caused by sickness or death and how to protect your assets. There is a sign up on the bulletin board if you would like to attend. If you signed up to become an usher for our parish, there will be a training session next Sunday, October 1st at 9.15 in church. Another training session will be scheduled for those who cannot attend uh, in the following week. A date and time will be advertised in the bulletin. Next Sunday is October 1st, and uh, the first Sunday of every October, we have the life chain in the square of New Bloomfield, where we stand for just one hour in silent prayer as a faithful witness against abortion in our nation. Um, we would love that you would join us. Um, that's at 2.30 to 3.30 in the square of New Bloomfield. Have a good day and a, a blessed rainy weekend. I looked out today and I said, it's really miserable. <laughs> I was cold all day and, and um, so, uh, but, as a Muslim Arab told me, all sunshine makes for a desert. So there's a benefit to the rain, and we need it. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. St. Bernard of Clairvaux, pray for us.